Hi, I'm Lucian. I'd like to introduce you to a new physical implementation of a qubit on a silicon surface. But first, what is a qubit? A classical bit is a physical system that encodes information into discrete values and can be mapped into 0 and 1. A quantum bit, or qubit, is a quantum system that encodes information into a two-dimensional Hilbert space. Its values can be mapped into a sphere of radius 1, called the block sphere. Its time evolution can be visualized in a similar way to the red dot on the block sphere shown here. A charged qubit is a particular case of a qubit where the information is encoded into the orbital degrees of freedom of a charged particle, like an electron. This can be achieved, for example, in a double well system, where the electron moves between left and right wells by a quantum tunneling effect. This is exactly the situation presented in our study. What's remarkable about our charged qubit is its extremely small size, because in our case, the double well features are achieved on the atomic scale. In order to create and observe this kind of qubit, we need the most advanced microscopes available today, such as the Scanlink Tiling Microscope, or STM. STM can produce a topographic image of the hydrogen terminated 2 by one silicon 001 surface. Here, the bright protrusions are the locations of the hydrogen atoms shown in white. These are well organized into lines two atoms wide, called dimer rows. STM also has the capability of positioning the tip right above one of the hydrogen atoms and by applying an electric field cause a chemical bond failure that releases the hydrogen into the vacuum. What remains there is a dangling bond capable of holding a localized electron. If we remove another nearby hydrogen, the electron will be shared between the two dangling bonds by tunneling back and forth. What we see in the STM micrograph are bright protrusions at these locations, shown here for two qubit separations. One of the most critical aspects in any physical implementation of a qubit is the coherence. This is caused by interactions with the outside world, for example with photons or phonons. These interactions can throw off the coherent evolution of the qubit in an uncontrolled way. By making the dangling bonds so close together as to create a qubit of atomic dimensions, we can achieve extremely high tunneling rates, up to hundreds of terahertz, between the two sites. Our theoretical treatment for the ensemble of qubits is based on an extended Hubbard model. The model Hamiltonian includes the self-energy, the kinetic energy, the on-site repulsion, the inter-site repulsion, and an external potential term because the dynamics inside each qubit is so fast compared to events in the outside world, it is a good approximation to consider the qubits in the ensemble as being coupled via this Hamiltonian and also subject to Markovian qubit decoherence from outside. We narrow down the two most important sources of decoherence as being the johnson nyquist noise in the nearby electrodes and the phonons in the silicon crystal. These can be calculated for various dangling bond separations inside a qubit, and we compare the results in a single graph with the coherent tunneling rates of the qubit. Here we can see that, as long as the separation is small, on the left of the blue dotted line, the qubit tunneling rate is greater by many orders of magnitude than the dominant decoherence rate. Such a qubit with low decoherence enables many quantum computation operations to be performed before the onset of critical decoherence renders it unreliable. This is the single most important advantage presented by having a charged qubit of such a small size. More experimental and theoretical work is required in order to fully assess quantum computation architectures using this kind of qubit.